It might seem cutthroat, but conventional Hollywood wisdom says that if an actor hasn't had a breakthrough role by their mid-30s, chances are it's never going to happen. All right, kid. Good luck out there. Hollywood's problem with ageism has been a hot topic in recent years, with iconic stars like Oscar winner Dame Helen Mirren describing the treatment of older actresses in Tinseltown as outrageous. But there are some who defy the odds. Here's who's proving that really good things come to those who wait. Jeremy Renner Renner was already 40 when he made his debut in the Marvel Cinematic Universe with a cameo appearance in Thor. But the actor's first taste of real fame came when he starred in The Hurt Locker, which won Best Picture at the 2010 Academy Awards and earned Renner a Best Actor nom. Renner initially started to gain recognition in indie circles after portraying serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer in a 2002 biopic, but still had to pick up a second job to make ends meet. He told Access Hollywood, I was a makeup artist. It bought me a lot of free time to go audition when I needed to because I only had to work a few hours a week. I didn't have to wait tables, so it was actually a great gig. But not quite as great as his more recent gigs. That's pretty great. That's your job. Awesome. Samuel L. Jackson Jackson first popped up in early 90s flicks, including Patriot Games and Jurassic Park. Hold on to your butts. But it wasn't until the midpoint of the decade that he became a household name, thanks to Quentin Tarantino. Jackson auditioned for Reservoir Dogs, but failed to win a part. It wasn't until he bumped into the director after the film Sundance screening that he realized just how big an impression he'd made. Jackson told Jimmy Fallon, Walked up to him and said, man. Say, say what again? Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, how'd you like the guy who got your part? And I was like, movie would have been much better with me in it. <laughs> but Tarantino had other things in mind for the actor. A copy of Pulp Fiction's script arrived in Jackson's mailbox a few weeks later. He was 45 when he landed the role of Bible-quoting hitman Jules, and the rest is history. Christoph Waltz Another beneficiary of Quentin Tarantino's eye for talent, Waltz was 51 years old when he landed the role of the villain in 2009's Glorious Bastards. He won the Best Supporting Actor Oscar for his performance and bagged the same award again under Tarantino's direction in 2012's Django Unchained. Vaults told The Guardian, I don't owe Tarantino my craft, but I do owe him my place. I've done so many jobs because I've had to, not because I've wanted to. And I tried to imagine what would have happened to me had it not been for Quentin. John Hamm John Hamm's career changed overnight when Mad Men premiered in 2007, landing the mid-30s actor in the mainstream, having previously worked as a set decorator on soft porn movies just to keep his head above water in Los Angeles. He told the Daily Mail that not getting his breakthrough role until later in life turned out to be a blessing in disguise, saying, I'd have probably handled it with way less grace. Most of us are different in our 20s than we are in our 30s. I may have gone off the rails, who knows? You're less comfortable with who you are. I'm thrilled that it happened later for me." I, I, I had no grand plan. I, was, I just wanted to work. James Gandolfini The late James Gandolfini plied his trade as a character actor before David Chase cast him in the career-defining role of New Jersey mob boss Tony Soprano, a role he was offered after casting director saw him playing a bit part gangster named Virgil in 1993's True Romance. Gandolfini, who was 38 when he was cast, remembered that at the time, I thought, I can do this, but I thought they would hire someone a little more debonair. Some good-looking guy, not George Clooney, but some Italian George Clooney, and that would be that. Gandolfini's late bloomer career was shockingly cut short when he suffered a heart attack and died at 51 of cardiac arrest while visiting Italy in 2013, but his legacy will live on forever. I've had a good run, man. I'm fine. <laughs> I've had a good run. Alan Rickman the film industry suffered a major blow in 2016 when Alan Rickman unexpectedly passed away. And tragically, mainstream audiences didn't get to fully appreciate Rickman's acting until he was 42. The former Royal Shakespeare Company member told The Guardian, The good thing about starting late in this career is you go, well, what's the worst that could happen? I didn't know anything about LA. I didn't know anything about the film business. I'd never made a film before, but I was extremely cheap. He landed the part of Hans Gruber in 1988's Die Hard and set the wheels of his career in motion. But Rickman will no doubt be best remembered as Severus Snape from the record-breaking Harry Potter franchise. Brian Cranston In the early 2000s, Brian Cranston became a household name with Malcolm in the Middle. But that notoriety didn't immediately segue into mainstream success. Luckily, Breaking Bad creator Vince Gilligan happened to see a promo for Malcolm and remembered previously working with Cranston in the 90s. Still relatively unknown back then, Gilligan had managed to land a gig writing an episode of The X-Files that Cranston guested in. Gilligan explained on Mark Maron's WTF podcast, And I said even as the shoot was progressing for that episode, I want to work with this guy again in the future. Cranston was already in his 50s when Gilligan approached him about the iconic role of Walter White in Breaking Bad. And the actor isn't bitter about not being taken more seriously earlier in his career, telling The Guardian, 
I'm grateful it happened later because I was able to develop a sound foundation of my life without any level of fame given to a boy. These days, Cranston's a bona fide star worldwide. You all know exactly who I am. Melissa McCarthy McCarthy started out on the stand-up comedy circuit and later graduated to television, becoming a fixture on comedy drama Gilmore Girls between 2000 and 2007. However, things didn't start to really fall into place for her until 2011, when she auditioned for a role in Bridesmaids. According to The Guardian, director Paul Feig likened McCarthy's audition to a religious moment that left him speechless and won her the role. Morgan Freeman Morgan Freeman had a few minor movie appearances in the late 60s, but his first major gig came in 1971, when he joined the cast of the PBS kids' show The Electric Company. Freeman appeared in an astonishing 780 episodes over the next seven years, portraying a variety of characters. But despite it being a huge part of his early career, Freeman rarely discusses the show. When you ask Freeman what his real breakthrough role was, he'll tell you it was the Armani-clad pimp Fast Black in 1987's Street Smart, which he landed when he was 49. He reflected on his late career fortune during an interview for the American Film Institute, saying, It didn't have to happen at all. Right. Well, I'm very, very lucky and very um, grateful that I had a career. And he revealed the secret to his hard-earned success. And you know, you just keep tap dancing, something good will happen. Billy Bob Thornton Musician and actor Billy Bob Thornton decided to pursue a career in the movies later than most, saying he was inspired by a mixture of Elvis Presley flicks and classic westerns, according to Rolling Stone. The Arkansas native reportedly got his first taste of filmmaking in 1992, when he co-wrote and starred in cult favorite One False Move. But it was his directorial debut, Sling Blade, that put him on the map as a 41-year-old. Sling Blade became a sleeper hit for Thornton, bagging him Oscars for Best Writing and Best Adapted Screenplay, as well as a Best Actor nom for his work as developmentally disabled killer Carl Childers. Thornton told CNN in 2002 that he's glad it took him some time to find fame and fortune. I'm real glad it happened now. I wouldn't have been able to handle it. I couldn't handle anything when I was 20. Thanks for watching. Click the Nikki Swift icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.